Welcome back to the Victorian Bar Room. We are on location today in the Conrad Caldwell House Museum in Louisville, Kentucky, and we're talking about chartreuse. Now, the first time I ever tasted chartreuse was when I, in a very wonderful, opulent Victorian dining room. So every time I catch that aroma, I catch that taste, I, uh, I'm just transported to that world. And so when we decided we were going to do this episode, I knew we had to come here. I'm with uh, Chris Kirkland today. He's the assistant director at Conrad Caldwell House. And what can you tell us about the place? Well, you're in luck. I mean, screams opulence, right? The entire house does. Uh, we are currently in the dining room here in the home, and the house was built between the years of 1893 and 1895 for a wealthy industrialist named Theophilus Conrad. He was actually an immigrant from France, which plays with it really well with your chartreuse that you have here today. Um, and this was his crowning achievement. He wanted to showcase how wealthy he was, uh, but also wanted to ensure that the house stood as an ornament to the city or as a testament to the city. Uh, and we are really the, the major landmark here in Old Louisville in the historic district. Awesome. Yeah. And if you have never been here, uh, Old Louisville is one of the most extensive preserved Victorian neighborhoods in the country. And the Conrad Caldwell House is its crown jewel. So you got to get down here and see it. Uh, we're going to catch up with Chris here in a few minutes. But first, let's look more at what we're drinking today. We're not going to get deeply into the early history of chartreuse today, but it has been produced for centuries by the Carthusian monks in France. Uh, it was originally a medicinal elixir. They include 130 botanicals and plants. Now, eventually, as these things go, people realized it was pleasant just to drink for the sake of it. And so the first step past that was uh, formulating what we think of as, uh, as the green chartreuse, uh, which is, believe it or not, a toned down version of what they've been producing uh, previously. Uh, and then in 1840, they, uh, they started producing the yellow chartreuse, uh, which comes in... Uh, much more approachable. Uh, it's only about 80 proof and uh, it's just a much milder flavor than, than the green is. Now in 1869 and repeated in 1874 uh, in some of the cocktail manuals that have come down to us, they refer to no less than four varieties of chartreuse available. Uh, these are the only two that I have found uh, today. If we can rediscover those other ones sometime, that would be fantastic and I would, I would love to try them. But right now, if you go and you search for them, you're gonna find green and yellow. Uh, by the time we get to the 1880s and Harry Johnson is writing his bartender's manuals, he defines chartreuse as one of the principal cordials of the bar. And we do see in, uh, in these cocktail manuals going all the way back to the original with Jerry Thomas on through the rest of the 19th century, um, chartreuse is used as an ingredient in some cocktails or, or, or beverages, uh, such as the, uh, the Cures Foster Punch, which I'm not sure if that's aired by this date or not. We're filming this kind of out of order. So uh, we, if you haven't already, you will see uh, chartreuse used as an ingredient in other drinks. And it was also drank on its own for its own sake. And it is delightful. But before we go any further, I want to see more of this fabulous house. So I'm going to meet back up with Chris and take a look around. actually the first room that visitors will see upon entering the main doors of the museum. So we usher them directly into this space and one of the reasons for that are the two gentlemen on the wall behind me. Mr. Conrad, the original owner of the house, featured here, and directly behind me, Mr. Caldwell, the second owner of the house. Um, this particular room, uh, after a dinner or an entertainment here in the home, would have been where the ladies would have retired to. So we talk heavily about uh, the ladies in this space and how they would have utilized the parlor. The library, which we'll go over to next to talk a little bit more about the call walls there, that would be where the gentleman would have retired after the end of the evening. Now, when visitors come here for a tour, some of the things that they can expect, uh, we are three stories. It's a 10,000 square foot home right here in the middle of Old Louisville. Uh, thankfully, uh, throughout the years, we've adapted to the neighborhood. So for several years in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, we were actually a widow's home for Presbyterian ladies, which meant that they needed a handicap ramp as well as an elevator to all of the main floors of the house. So we always encourage guests, even if they have a walker or a wheelchair or need a ramp or an elevator, we have those things, which most historic homes don't have. 
Uh, so they're actually able to see the entire house rather than just the main floor of the museum. Um, and another thing that visitors can expect when touring the house is that they will learn not only about what life was like for a late Victorian, early Edwardian family living here in Louisville, but they'll also learn about what Louisville was like in the Gilded Age um, here in the city. So we're now in the Caldwell Family Library. Um, and for this, I really wanted to focus in on the Caldwells more than the Conrads. Conrads did build the house. They lived here for about 10 years, uh, but it was more of a retirement home for the two, uh, the two of them. Uh, when the Caldwells moved in, however, this was really an, entertain, uh, an entertainment home. So this was the house that was, you know, in the Courier Journal every, uh, every week for a different party that Mrs. Caldwell was hosting. Um, and the library really showcases the difference between both the Conrad and the Caldwell family uh, because Mrs. Caldwell made several changes to the house when they moved in. Uh, the entire exterior of the house looks like a castle from Europe, so she wanted the interior to reflect that. Uh, that being said, she took out the original cherry mantle that was in this room and installed this fireplace, which looks a little bit more European. It's definitely oversized in that fashion. And she also admired a chandelier from Speak Hall in Liverpool, England so much that she actually had an Italian carpenter take a solid piece of oak and carve her an exact replica of that chandelier. Wow. Um, so this really was a home of opulence and a home for entertaining. Um, to kind of go into a little bit more of the entertaining, we all we have to do is look here at the, uh, the table on the library. Um, there was actually a book, a little red book called Party Lists, 1906, belonged to Grace Caldwell, her daughter. And throughout that, uh, excuse me, throughout that list, uh, throughout that notebook, there are parties that they hosted here inside the house, as well as parties that Grace attended uh, throughout the greater Louisville area. Um, not just uh, the guest list, but also what they would have served, the alcohol that would have been served, the aperitivos that would have been served as well. Um, so it's a great source for how the family would have entertained here in this particular space. So does anything stick out from the drinks they were uh, having? Um, a lot of kind of uh, iced sorbet drinks. Right. Um, there was actually one that used egg whites in the, the overall concoction, and you could serve it as kind of a sippable, or you could freeze it and serve it as a sorbet, but it always appears in Mrs. Caldwell's menus right in the middle of, uh, of the, the dinner service. So it was kind of like, a, a I guess, a, to clear your, your palate right. uh, before the next round of meals. So we're out here in the entryway. Um, we've just toured the parlor and the library, and we really told you what you could expect on a tour here in the parlor. But more importantly than it being a 10,000 square foot home, three stories and wheelchair accessible, um, one of the big things to note about the house is the woodwork inside the home. All of the woodwork featured on every single floor of the house is original from when the Conrads had it constructed by the Clark and Loomis uh, company in 1895, 1893 to 1895. So the woodwork was all done by German master carpenters. Um, that was a that was something that Mrs. Conrad uh, wanted to ensure. She was from Germany, so she had a strong German heritage. So only German carpenters were allowed to wo uh, work on the woodwork in this house. Wow. Um, features seven different kinds of wood throughout the entire home. So every room that you go into will be a different wood type. Uh, and Mrs. Conrad, uh, being an avid quilter, wanted to ensure that every single room in the house, uh, the flooring for each room was a different quilt pattern. So every room that you walk into not only features different kinds of wood, but also will feature a different quilt pattern throughout the house, which is something <laughs> unique and special to this actual home. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chris. That was great. And uh, now let's taste some of this stuff. Amy has stepped out from behind the camera once again uh, to join us for the tasting portion because, of course, he because can't. Because chartreuse. Right, because you can't pass up chartreuse. <laughs> um, for the sake of today, we are going to focus on the, the green variety uh, for the tasting. This is the sort that I first had uh, in that wonderful Victorian dining room I was telling you about earlier. Uh, and so we're going to focus on it. Now, uh, there's a couple of different ways that this is, um, that different people said to serve this stuff, right? Um, and we're going to use two different ones from Harry Johnson, which, as you might have 
picked up by now as one of my favorite cocktail manual authors. Um, in 1882, he said to basically just pour it in a pony glass and serve it. Uh, I don't actually have pony glasses, so we are using wines, uh, which are about twice the quantity. A pony glass is one ounce, a wine is two. Um, but we're going to taste it two different ways, so this is going to work out for us. Um, so it's set up for the second sort, and we'll explain that in a second. But let's just go ahead and take a taste of it as is and see how we feel about it. Should we toast to something? Oh, to, um, well... To Mr. Conrad and Mr. Caldwell? Yes! Yeah, to Mr. Conrad and Mr. Caldwell. To a new year at the museum. That's right. Woo! Oh, that is so much flavor. <laughs> That's a lot. Ooh. I don't not like it. I no, actually, no. I like it, but it's, um, it's a lot. Yeah, this yeah. is, um... 55%, uh, so that's 110 proof. To get, hit the back of my throat first, it made my eyes water, so, yeah. <laughs> Take a second sip, though, because when you're prepared for it, yeah. it's a little, and mm. then it still rolls off the back of your throat, though. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One, one thing I find difficult to take this just straight is how syrupy it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you don't really, I can't drink a whole lot of it in this yeah. form because it's so thick, it's so syrupy, mm -hmm. uh, which is lovely. And we certainly are getting the full, uh, yeah. the full uh, hit of those 150 botanicals. I so. could drink a lot of it. I just probably should <laughs> <Right>. not. No. <laughs> okay, well, this is what Harry Johnson said to do in 1882. Um, in 1888, he had cleaned it up a little bit. And uh, so he has you serving it like this. And this is just kind of an approximation with the equipment that we had. Um, the tumblers and the uh, goblets are both actually from the 1880s. The, the wines fall somewhere between the 1860s and the 1890s. Uh, so it's, it's, this is the right era for the drink and for the house. Uh, so he has you serving the, the chartreuse atop a tumbler with a glass of water next to it. So basically at this point, we all had different reactions to it. And we can assemble it as we will. Yeah. So we can turn our tumblers over. I really do like this presentation, too. This is really nice. Yeah, yeah, this is a very nice presentation. Yeah, I could see being served something like this in a very fancy cafe. Well, and the great thing, some, some of these cocktails, it's like, it's, it's not a way to do it. There is certain times when you are directed to work with your customer. And you got a little spoon there if you want to mix. Mm. However much water. However much water you like, yeah. Okay. You want to start off with a little bit, see how it evens it out. And this is still water. Yes, this is just still water. It's not ice. We did chill it. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. I do like that. And it's probably much safer. Yeah. A little more approachable? Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely more approachable. Yeah. It doesn't hit as hard as it would just by itself. Well, and I find it too when you get to the point that you're cutting that syrupiness and you can see those oils swirling around just like you can yeah. any distilled spirit mm -hmm. um, if you're cutting it with water. Um, it makes it, it's, it's a lot easier to take in all of those wonderful flavors mm -hmm. um, that they've combined uh, mm -hmm. into the stuff. Yeah, you get every single note with the water and you get the ability to kind of savor each one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, are you all feeling it in your nose at all a little bit as well? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and like right, not quite my lips, but like right behind my teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so guys, here it is, uh, Green Chartreuse. Uh, I highly encourage you to check it out. Uh, and again, you know, ever since I tasted it that first time, it just transports me to an opulent Victorian dining room. So thank you, Chris, for uh, meeting up with us today and let's drink in here. Uh, yeah. Does Definitely. anybody have any final thoughts? I like the experience. I like the way it's served. I like mm -hmm. I, I like mixing it yourself. I feel like you don't just get a drink; you get a whole experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You get to you get to be you get to play the bartender. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, I think that's well one of the things I like about these manuals is sometimes they do recognize the different tastes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people, they're not necessarily just hitting you over the head with it. Um, mm -hmm. They sit you a selection of things in front of you. Or some of the, yeah. the drinks where you know an absinthe is an option. They mm -hmm. they they say to ask the customer if they actually if that's their taste. Yeah. Now, Amy mentioned about uh, it being at a cafe, but um, 
I'm wondering when this would, if this would be served at a dinner, um, how neat would this be to walk in yeah. to the dining room and have it preset yes. ready for all of your guests to yeah. experience? Yeah. yeah. Um, as well. Especially because it is an aperitif and a digestif. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. I think that'd be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's a key component in, um, in the post cafe, which is mm. Mm, post coffee. Yep. So. I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Chris, for hosting us here today. Um, please uh, check out the description of this video. Uh, check out Conrad Caldwell House's website. Check out their social media. Keep up with any events if you're passing through uh, or you're a local. This is a place you absolutely have to see. Um, also, think about giving these guys some support. Um, it's been a tough time uh, for everybody, and you know, luckily, these places are making it, yep. but um, every little bit helps uh, when, when it comes to a place like this. So uh, check out the Conrad Caldwell House. Stay with us on the Victorian Bar Room, and we will see you next time. And here's to you guys. See you all. Cheers. But. Thanks for joining us today. We have a blast making these episodes, but they do take a lot of time and resources. And as the Victorian showed us, time is money. So if you might feel moved to show us some support, check that description down below to see how you might be able to do that. We sure would appreciate it. Also, don't forget to click subscribe and that bell icon to keep up with what we're doing right here on the Victorian Bar Room. Thanks for being with us, and here's to you. <laughs>